Diagnosis is, is, is imperative, okay? Early, early intervention is essential for the future of the child. So a diagnosis is essential as early as you can. Is that how autism works in that um, you, you don't find out pre-birth, as in, you, you know, like when you have all your baby tests and stuff? Yeah, no, 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 no. This, this doesn't show up? No, no. And, and diagnosis is, is, is imperative, okay? Early, early intervention is essential for the future of the child. So a diagnosis is essential as early as you can because you can't access any of the services that you need if you don't have a, an, an official diagnosis. But then in Ireland at the time, there was a three and a half year waiting list through the state to have a diagnosis done. They tell you early intervention is essential, but yet there's a three and a half year waiting list for a diagnosis. So how can you help your child? So these are all the, the issues. But I didn't know what autism was. I'd never heard of autism. Um, I mean, I'd heard of the Rain Man and that, and that type of thing, but that's not really a good understanding of what autism actually is. Autism, it's ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. Uh, and in any spectrum disorder, it means it can be very, very mild and very, very extreme. Go, it goes infinitely on both sides. Um, I, I had, obviously, I was back in Ireland. I was trying to find out who I was. I was trying to figure out, I left boys on a 26. You know, my career effectively was over at 26 and I needed to figure out what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I didn't know what I was going to be singing or acting or, t you know, presenting TV or radio. I didn't know. I knew I wanted to stay in the entertainment business, but I didn't know where I was, where I belonged. So it was, it was, it was a tough, tough time. Um, but I had a familiar face. So people would often ask me to do charity work to, to, to promote the charity, because if you have somebody with a familiar face, they, you might get a bit of press or media um, off the back of it. So a friend of mine rang me up and he said, a friend of his was running a charity golfing event and I didn't play golf at the time. And he said, he just wants to know, will you turn up to the golf club and get a photograph taken on the first tee? It would really, really support this charity. And I said, yeah, no problem. So I turned up, I met the guy who ran the charity and, and we swung the club on the first tee and all the press paparazzi were there. I hadn't been home in Dublin for years because, I mean, I would be, but I wouldn't be out, out and out. I wouldn't be seen there because I, I'd only be home to see the family and I'd be gone again. So to get the opportunity to photograph me at the time was, was all the journalists and all the photographers came out. So I was promoting his charity. I says, what's the charity? He says, oh, it's a school um, that we've put together and opened ourselves for the um, education and the intervention of children with autism. I said, what's autism? And he goes, well, my little girl has, has autism and basically it's a neurological developmental disorder that, that, that can affect um, you know, learning difficulties. Um, there's, there's a the whole array of different disabilities that seem to be related together through the word autism. And, and I kept asking him questions because every answer he gave me, I could, re I could relate it to my daughter. So I was getting really kind of emotional now because I'm, I'm, I'm quite certain now that I've figured out what the problem is with my daughter. She has autism. And he could see I was getting a little bit emotional. So he knew I was asking the questions for a reason. So he said, look, maybe my wife would be better to speak to than I am. So his wife came and sat down beside me and, and, and we spoke. And I ultimately was, was fighting the tears because I, I knew, I knew now, I, I was certain now my daughter had autism and I was scared out of my mind. I didn't know what the fuck to do. I knew this was going to break my wife's heart because she wouldn't know what to do either. So I remember going home, I rang my older brother actually, and I was crying on the phone. I, I left the golf course and I got into my Jeep and I had blackout windows in the Jeep. So I wasn't going to, because the, the, the lady came out with her four kids to wave goodbye to me from the golf course. And of course I just wanted to cry. So I started crying, but like I say, I had black windows. And I, I rang me older brother and I just said, I, I was very emotional on the phone to my brother. He goes, where are you? Where are you? I was pissing down with rain. I was on the M50, which is the ring road outside of Dublin. And, and it was dangerous because the rain was pumping down and I, tears coming out of my eyes. I was very upset. And he said, look, just, just, just pull over. I'll be there in 20 minutes. So I pulled into the hard shoulder and my brother turned up and he said, look, just drive your car behind mine. I'll get you home. So he kind of drove in front of me and, and we got home and he goes, look, I'm not coming in. This is going to be a moment for you and your missus. So he said, I'll, I'll stay in the car outside. And if I don't hear from you in 15 or 20 minutes, I'll go on home. I said, right, grand. So I walked into the house and I had red eyes. My wife could see I'd been crying. She said, geez, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I just said, look, I, I think Mia has autism. And she gave me a smack across the face out of complete shock. And then she hugged me and, and we both cried. 
And that was the start of my journey. Um, I realized then that early intervention was essential, but I couldn't access it without a diagnosis. The diagnosis is a three and a half year waiting list. Um, so I'm gonna have to find something to do privately. Um, and even getting it done privately then, there's no services available in Ireland. And I found loads of other parents that were going through the same shit, that nobody wanted to look after their kids. Nobody wanted to maintain the appropriate intervention and, and, and the tailored education that you need for a child with autism. So we just decided to do it ourselves as parents. We got the committee together. We started up Irish Autism Action and um I just threw myself right in to, to, to learning and educating myself on what needed to be done. And that's how I dealt with it. Because as, as Mia got older, she never spoke. She never spoke till she was seven. So well, not, not a word. No, just not like it's non-verbal, completely right. non-verbal. The first time we heard her voice, she came into the kitchen. I'll never forget it. I had a hangover again, lying on the sofa watching telly. And if she had to walk through this room to get to the kitchen there, she just walked by us. And she, and she watched Annie, the musical Annie, over and over again. She had the same movies that she'd look and she'd watch it, the TV right here. And the, you know the song Tomorrow from Annie? Tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow. Um, she walked through singing that song, but she'd never spoken before. So it was like she was a deaf person trying to sing. Oh, 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 like that. But it was a sound, it was a noise. We knew what she could sing. We knew the song she was trying to sing. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. We were all balling. We were so, it was like, it's just, it was an amazing breakthrough. We had a system at home called PEX. Because you remember, there was no smartphones. There was no iPads. There was no tablets. So we had Velcroed pieces of, photo, fo Velcroed photographs to a chart of her bottle, her blankie, her favorite crisps, her favorite sweets. So when she wanted something, it's called the PEX system, picture exchange communication. Oh. So she'd come in and, and she'd point and I'd go, show me on the chart, show me on the chart. And she'd, she'd pull off the, the Velcro of her milk. I say, good girl, say milk, say milk. And this is what you have to do. And even if she just makes a stammer or, or a, 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 she mutters something, you go, good girl, very good. And you reward her. It's, it's, it's rewarding all the time. And then you go to the fridge, get the, the milk, but you don't let her take the milk. You go, say, thank you. She says, makes an effort to say thank you. And you go, you're welcome. And off she goes, put the card back on the chart, blah, blah, blah. But you've got to know when to take the chart away because they know, they know they, their, their disability. They, they, they understand it themselves and they'll use it to their own advantage, right? So if you don't take the cards away in time, they'll get lazy with the speech. So you have to know. So the reason, the, the day we knew to take the chart away, she, she comes out and she goes, Papa. I said, good girl. I get the papa, hand it the papa, say, say, thank you. She grabbed it out of my hand and went, you're welcome. <laughs> and she ran off. So, you know, and she, and, and she we, we, we opened a purpose school that had tailored education for the specific need of each individual child. There was a, there was part of that tailored education for Mia was a thing called ABA, Applied Behavioral Analysis. Uh, it's a form of education. I think it was the, the, the developed and put together in Massachusetts, in the New England Center of Massachusetts, which is a great center for children with autism, for the education of children and young adults with autism. So we went and visited the, um, we went and visited the New England Center in Massachusetts and we, 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 we developed part of the ABA program in the school um, as part of the education, not solely. A lot of parents of children with autism don't believe in ABA. They think it's like training an animal. I completely disagree. I can only disagree because I've seen the help that it has given me in educating my daughter. And me, you know, you know to let you know where me is now, me is 24 now. She graduated from university two years ago with A's All Honours. She's working for an American pharmaceutical company coding on three platforms and software developing. She's got, she's got a male companion um, who's a, her friend. She, she passed her driving test first time. Um, she's unbelievable. She sets the bar so high for herself and, and she really needs to achieve. She always wants to be peer equal or better. And uh, she talks with a bit of an American accent, but she's the most beautiful girl in the world. And she, she, she's my absolute heart. I love her to death. And her brother is so good with her. You know, he's four years older than her and he's always been her best friend and that takes care of her. And, and his girlfriend is very good to her too. So I'm very, very lucky. Um, but like with the right diagnosis at the right time, with the right intervention, it's, it's the sky is the limit, but you've got to put the effort in. You've got to put the time and the effort in. The parents have to put the time and the effort in, not expect somebody else to do it for them. They have to do it for themselves. And if they, the, the, the more time they invest in the child, the bigger their investment will pay out later on in life for, for the, for the quality of life that the child might have. Um, 
you know, Mia is very content and happy. She's she's with me or she's with her mother most of the time, but she's very independent and she's very happy within herself and she's achieving her goals, which is which is the, the main thing. There's a show on Netflix at the moment called Love on the Spectrum. And it's it's every single kid is completely different, but there's so many similarities to having a child with autism in the house. And it's amazing to see these families all over America living so similarly to how we live with our daughter. And you just realize you're not on your own. And there's a million families experiencing the same things. You know, high perform people, high performing uh, autism pe children or, or young adults, they want to be loved. They want to be in a relationship. You know, they want all the things that we want for ourselves, you know, and, and I experienced that with my daughter Mia. But looking at Love on the Spectrum, I can see there's so many little boys and girls like Mia out there that all want the same thing. And, and they suffer with the same anxieties. They suffer from the same stresses and, and upsets. And, and really, it's just if the rest of the world was to educate themselves a little bit more on autism and and you know, understand they're trying to live in our environment, whereas we should try and live in theirs for a while. And it just, it would make the world a much, much better place.